Hello and welcome to our Swiss Switzerland IRM risk uh, webinar. Um, my name is Pascal Busch and uh, today's topic is risk management agility and risk management culture. Are these just buzzwords or real enterprise needs? And uh, I have the pleasure to uh, introduce you to our speaker. Our today's speaker is uh, Stefan Martin. And most of you in Switzerland will know him from uh, his engagement in the, in the community. So uh, he's very engaged in, in IRM, um, in the Switzerland uh, IRM. Uh, he's on the board of our regional group and he's the secretary there. Uh, but I know him for many years now and he's been, since ever I know him, he's been engaged in bringing the community together and uh, promoting risk management around Switzerland and around the world. And this is also reflected in his role as co-founder and uh, organizer of the RISCAN conferences um, that are basically here uh, coming from out of uh, Switzerland, all his brain work basically. But he's also owner of Smart Risk Consulting, uh, consulting boutique for risk management, and um, that he has actual, actually the, the experience in risk management um, is shown in his career in risk management roles at Aquamital, for example, Syngenta, et cetera, where he did exactly the work of, of a risk manager. So he knows very well um, what's going on there. And in addition, he's a certified trainer for ISO 31K um, by PECB and uh, also a speaker and trainer for INSEAD uh, and, and others. So without further doing, I would uh, pass on to you, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pascal. Um, I'm not sure you introduce yourself as the chairman of the uh, IRM Switzerland Renal chapter. So <laughs> just uh, remembering that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for, for giving me that uh, opportunity to share um, some work I did with a, with a customer. Um, Basically, um, risk management agility, um, risk management culture, yes, is it a buzzword? And this is clearly the question I was asked by that customer. So we decided to, to work on that and to, to find out uh, by ourselves. Um, there are two, um, two steps uh, in that, in that um, study. Um, what we did first is look at what's available out there you know, um, easily you know, on the web. Uh, we uh, contacted a number of market experts um, wrote, uh, looked at white papers, um, and then from that theoretical work, we created a survey that we submitted to a number of uh, practitioners from different industries um, from theirs. Um, and at the end, we decided to consolidate all this data uh, to understand how to become risk agile um, and how to embed risk management culture in a better way. Um, so I'd like to, to share that with you. I was uh, allowed to share the results um, from that from that study um, from that customer so I'm sharing with you the the content um, maybe first um, also sharing with you what was the um, initial steps um, from that study and it was a theoretical work um, a number of elements are available out there and you may recognize a number of these names. Uh, these are the people that have participated in the theoretical work. So I used documentation from them, or I had them on, on the phone, exchange of emails, number of things. Uh, I'd like to go through a little bit um, through, to, to that. So I mean, Adrian Clements, um, at first, um, on top of the left here uh, is a loss prevention expert. He worked many, many years in risk management in different activities. Uh, he has a, a very interesting view um, concerning loss prevention uh, and he's pruning also agile risk management. We'll have to understand what it means. Uh, Michael Rasmussen is an expert in, in GRC, so governance, risk and compliance. So more about the organization uh, that we should follow, we should implement in, in organizations. Um, a couple of guys from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, so these big organizations, big consulting uh, groups also have this, these resources uh, to write uh, white papers and there are many things interesting uh, in these documents. Um, Darren Jacobs uh, from Ready Now, Kevin Rombo from uh, the IRM Belgium uh, already did a um, presentation on agile environment 
um, last year, a bit more than last year now. Uh, McKinsey, again, big uh, consulting group, Parima, which is a risk management association based in Asia. Uh, they have defined some a competency framework, and there are some elements linked to um, agility um, in that framework. Um, Norman Marks, uh, who is a great supporter of risk management culture, uh, whatever it means, we'll see that also. Uh, Tim Leach uh, in the US, uh, Hans Lasser, uh, who is a former strategy risk management uh, head at Lego Group, and of course, um, there is a very good paper uh, at the IRM um, talking about risk culture um, in the resources for practitioners. So that's what's what I used um, in terms of um, the theoretical um, study. And um, of course, um, the, the first step is to try to understand, um, do we have existing definitions uh, for um, agility and culture? So I'll go through that very, very quickly, but that's um, easily uh, find on, on, of course, the web. Uh, so there is a definition from Google, Cambridge, quite um, uh, quite um, common, uh, ability to move quickly and easily, ability to think and understand quickly. Um, and I did find a number of definitions, a lot more in projects, so this is why I've decided to add this one here. Uh, the ability of the project team and the stakeholders to react to an event faster than the ability of the same event to adversely impact the project. I thought that was very interesting to look into. Um, and another definition I kept um, in that study is the one from Norman Marx, where he defines risk um, agility as the, the ability to alter and adapt risk management infrastructure to respond quickly to changing markets, customer preferences, or market dynamics. Interesting, he did um, align also that definition and link it to risk resiliency. So there's probably a belief that if you are more agile, you are more resilient in the end. And we're going to look into that, of course, a little bit. Um, right away, giving you um, heads on heads up on the um, culture uh, definition existing, uh, of course, um, on the web. I'll take the short one here, the one from Cambridge at the bottom of the slide. The way of life, especially general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time and I think that last these last words are very interesting particular time um, there is one of course existing um, given by the IRM um, about risk culture uh, is a term describing the values beliefs knowledge attitudes and understanding about a risk shared by a group of people with a common purpose. This applies to all organizations, including private companies, public bodies, governments, and non-for-profit. And these um, definitions are, should be probably combined to find the right one for your organization. Now with that, which is, um, of course, these are easy to find, just a few clicks and a few minutes, and you, you'll find it for yourself. Um, with all the um, documents um, I worked on for, for that customer, um, the literature available, I realize there are a number of, let's say, primary um, information, primary findings um, that we worked on, and I'm going to detail these ones. Uh, we have some common elements around concepts uh, of agility. Um, some people talk about process steps. Some people talk about the errors of doing, uh, of being agile or not being agile. Um, of course, definitions, we uh, looked at that already. The competencies, uh, what competencies should we look into to be more agile? What's the mindset um, for these organizations to implement um, these, uh, let's say, competencies? Um, frameworks, uh, beliefs, and cognitive biases are very important here, and how to justify to implement um, agility. So let's um, go into a bit more um, detail now on these aspects. Um, the concepts, um, a lot is around uh, top-down, um, management to follow the agile trend. So it's, we can see it, we hear that um, all the time and it's probably not a single day uh, without an article or somebody asking about um, agility. Um, and of course, uh, bottom-up um, number of things, and that's even more 
that's less uh, talked about for now, but Agile gives more autonomy to the teams. And it seems that for now, people are fearing um, this aspect. So we want to be Agile, but it seems that giving autonomy to teams is a bit more complex um, at the moment. So that's probably a barrier um, to implementing agility. Um, process steps. Um, very important, and I support that 100%. Um, it's about training executives uh, and management on how to assess risk. Uh, it is probably true that in many cases, or a lot of organizations, um, we as experts are um, asked to report on risk, uh, but very rarely we are asked on how do we assess and how do we analyze risk. And this is probably something that would be helping a lot in terms of being more agile. Of course, the second part of that element is accountability. Somebody needs to be responsible for something. Uh, would it be a risk? Would it be a project? Would it be a strategy? So accountability is something that um, these experts on the market have pushed a lot. Um, the, the errors, and I've just put one here and I'd like to read it because I, I believe people recognize, we can recognize themselves through that. Um, if trying to manage risk requires 200 employee hours to build a report once a year and you fail to see that risk issue started to develop 11 months ago and it takes you 11 months later in the annual report to be able to see it, you're reacting to risk, you are not managing risk. And I think that's quite common. Um, we need these reports because we need to give some information to management um, at some point in time, uh, but we have to ask ourselves, what does it take to create that report. Um, so I hope you can recognize yourself and I hope we can solve that at some point, of course, as well. Um, definitions, um, I think um, most of them are quite aligned. Um, and these are some, some elements here. Uh, looking into the future to see where you need to go as opposed to where you are going. It means you need to adapt. Um, Agile is about focusing on speed, value, and functionality. So to make it in short, and of course, anybody can adapt that. We'll see other aspects um, a little bit later. Um, in terms of competencies, uh, competencies means we need to address that with people. Um, and this is about cross-functional, self-organized, uh, and empowered teams delivering value through their flexibility, collaboration, and proactive management of risk. Um, a lot of number of words are around, of course, identity, active learning, environmental radar. Um, so all of these competencies, and there is a lot more, and we'll see that in the next few slides, um, again, is about training people or hiring people, which can prove they have these competencies and being useful for your organization. Um, of course, it's about mindset, and there is something specific about GRC. Um, GRC is something you do, not something you buy. Agile is about changing how you, your people think, act, and solve problems. And I think this can be organized through your um, governance model in the organization. That goes a lot with accountability, of course, in the organization. Um, the frameworks um, is also um, an important part. Um, Agile GRC is about collaboration with the second and third lines of defense. So we're not going to talk about second and third line of defense. There's a lot of discussion on the internet uh, around um, understanding if that makes sense to talk about second and third line of defense. We just have to um, remember that there are different levels in an organization uh, and we have to address responsibilities and accountabilities at different levels. Um, so collaboration with different functions of risk compliance, audit security can all work collect together collectively. And that's true with, of course, other processes in the organization. Next, um, belief, beliefs or cognitive biases, um, a very interesting um, document I wrote where um, it was written, agility has its own clock speed. So it's the organization to adapt to its environment, um, to adapt to a um, disruptive technology from a competitor, for example. Um, your organization needs to adapt more than the other way around. Um, justifications, um, 
of course, yes, uh, something I like very much. That solution is obsolete by the time it's ready to launch. Um, digital disruption of healthcare is bringing new competitors into the market, and the reason they're gaining ground is because they are more agile. So why do we need to adapt or being more agile? Is because the others will be maybe quicker than you on the job. Okay, so um, that was um, the result of the literature uh, research and some discussions with uh, market experts. Um, the second step of the study was to try to collect data and information from practitioners. So we went um, out there and contacted a number of risk managers um, in, in Switzerland uh, mainly um, from different industries. So as you can see here, there were people from air traffic control, construction, food logistics, packaging bank, software, pharma. Um, it is important, and this is what um, I try to convey since quite a number of years, um, you need to learn from other industries in order to widen your horizon, um, in order to, of course, um, check what are the other practices you could use for yourself. If you stay within your own industry, you might miss a number of um, good or best practices you could introduce for yourself. Um, so this is what we did. Uh, we um, sent out um, surveys, questionnaires, uh, and we collected the data. So I'm going to um, give you the results. Um, these are extracts of the data. It's not the full data set. Um, so I hope this will be um, relevant to you. So uh, of course, um, the first question we asked is, do you have a definition for agility? Um, in your organization, 100% of the answers were no, we do not define agility. Um, that's a clear sign, as I wrote here, that we do not know what agility means uh, and it should be defined. If we want to be agile, then we need to know what we talk about. Um, then we ask, okay, what, what's your own definition of agility if you would write it down? Most of the answers are about adapt, adapting to change or sudden changes, um, a lot of variety in the, the definitions, but uh, mainly it's around that. Um, a definition I like, uh, which I extracted from the results, is the, the one at the bottom of the, the slide. Um, agile means to be flexible enough to prioritize, work out details where it brings most business benefit and accept a basic approach where it doesn't. Agile is also strong communication and collaboration to achieve shared objectives. I like the last word because that's the basic for risk management. You need to, of course, link your risk to your strategy and objectives. And this is um, used here as well. So that's the, the part for um, do you have a um, agility definition? And if not, what would be the one you would like to share? Um, and then we went a little bit deeper. Do you have a definition, definition for risk management agility? 90% said no. Um, there is one I, I, I've used here, so it's funny because they don't define agility, they define risk management agility. So we already a step down in the process, we go deep in the process, um, which again means for me we need to define the upper level. So allows individual units to apply, control and adapt their risk management approach while getting more insights through flexibility aligning and communicating with peer risk manager from other units or third parties. So it's a lot about communication as we saw in the previous slide. So collecting data and communicating with other processes or other units, that's what we have from the survey. Um, if you had to write your own definition about risk management agility, then these are the ones that we've um, extracted again, um, making changes as they are needed. Um, straightforward process or framework for managing risk, which seems to be quite obvious, um, which could be probably the basic for risk management, not even agility. Um, case by case rather than brony applied solution. So the case by case element is probably interesting here. Um, understand what is no longer a priority. That's um, very interesting for me. Um, you need to reshape priorities if you want to be a agile and you need to accept to no longer work on the number of priorities. Um, the, the next one is, is, is classic. Uh, the last one, um, again, systematically apply a logical and efficient method. So that logical and efficient method can be used on the case-by-case -case, um, and a broadly applied solution, um, but you need to have some kind of standard 
process method in order to adapt it later to your specific needs. In terms of the, the mindset, and then here we are going back on the competency um, side. Um, the question was, have you listed necessary competencies or behaviors to be agile? It is important because if you don't list these competencies, and, and, it's, and here the results are, are absolutely clear, they have not listed these competencies, you do not know when you hire somebody um, you don't, don't have these indicators to tell yourself, well, that person can be agile in this environment or in that environment or in, in this context. So um, probably it's a good idea to begin to list what are the necessary um, competencies you want in your organization. And if you don't hire these people, then you probably want to train people internally to these um, competencies. So um, if you had to list a number of competencies and behaviors, what would be these ones? So you can see um, in the results uh, quite a number of things that um, respondents have uh, proposed. Um, a lot is about um, feedback, communication, being open-minded, uh, being experienced. Um, you can see 360 vision, uh, anticipation, um, learning, share, um, sharing. Uh, business acumen is something that was listed quite, quite some time. Um, as well, um, linking risks to objectives. Again, we are back to basics um, here, um, which tells us that companies already need to implement risk management, not even agile risk management, I would say. Um, problem solving, uh, monitoring what's inside, inside and outside um, the organization, um, stakeholder management, big picture, willing to accept priorities, other priorities, a bit like we said earlier, um, stopping doing a number of uh, activities as well. Um, comfortable with change, so this we have to understand what it means as well. Um, insight, pragmatism, tolerance, dynamism. So these are the elements, uh, probably they should be refined and worked by um, a number of organizations to be sure they're adapted to, to themselves. But yes, I believe we should list uh, competencies um, in our um, people. Then we looked at, okay, if we need to implement anything around risk agility, what would be the barriers? Um, and I mean, no surprise here, the barriers we've um, collected, I think, are the same for any type of new process uh, you would like to, uh, to implement. Um, so rigid company processes, company culture, um, regulations, uh, laws. I don't think laws are preventing, uh, honestly, uh, to implement risk agility. Um, so I, I don't agree on that uh, particular element here. Um, the type of decision-making process, um, the silos, private agenda, blaming culture, poor communication, um, lack of training. All these elements um, you can find here are absolutely um, classic to any new process um, you would like to implement in an organization. So the, Going forward, um, we asked, okay, what are the initiatives you have implemented or um, you would recommend um, to implement if you would like um, to um, be more agile? Um, again, probably classic, but doesn't do no harm to repeat them. So to integrate risk management in everyday business practices and decision making, not saying it's easy to do, but it's probably something I would highly recommend as well. Um, having an agile framework, so developing that Risk systems, here not software, but it could be, of course, software, a methods and approach, um, enabling others to in achieving it. So that means it's a lot about probably coaching and training. Um, at the bottom of the slides, um, going back to essential, the needs to have, uh, probably we don't want to be lost in too many priorities, um, unclear strategies, um, things like that. I like the one but last element, doing with management. And that connects um, with what I shared earlier uh, about the risk assessment. So risk assessments, I believe, also should be done with executives and with management, not just for them. And I think this will participate in being more agile in the future. Change. Um, what do you think will change um, after implementing risk agility initiatives? Um, 
and that's probably the the benefits uh, also that we can see um, lighter overall process uh, faster reaction times focus on actions and timely escalation of problems instead of yearly quarterly cycle so that links back to um, the risk reporting element uh, for organizations that may not have some escalation processes for example um, I like the third one risk would be actively lived rather than artificially artificially driven um, probably risk agility agenda would be connected to a greater agile framework so again we need to define what means agile and then risk management agility better collaboration better better risk insight flexibility um, and of course uh, grabbing some opportunities which i think is uh, written in the next um, slides as well um, of course in a survey um, there's always uh, things we want to add um, and that's quite uh, clear in our context. Um, agility is more and more important than necessary in such contexts. Um, just as a reminder, this um, study was on six months ago, so we were already um, in the COVID um, era. Um, and that organization really wanted to be forward-looking and proactive in their risk management activities. Um, and it was seen as a need for other uh, organization, of course, um, as well. Okay, a system that is simple and set up correctly immediately drives the right behaviors regardless of how the environment changes. So it's really a lot about um, training and competencies. Use a software that takes away the complexity. It's probably a software organization that wrote that, um, but there's probably some truth into that and I will uh, dig into it a little bit um, later in the, in the slides. So that first part was about agility. Uh, I'll do the same exercise about culture and risk management culture um, and sharing with you the results um, now. So um, on the um, definition for culture, the organization, um, so half of the organization do have um, a definition for culture, um, but it seems they have difficulties to find it. Um, so maybe it's because that second um, step of the study or that second part uh, reminded them that I didn't have any uh, definition for agility. So they thought it would be good to say, yes, we do have a definition for culture. But in the end, we did not collect any other um, definitions, um, uh, but one, um, which is something like the way we do things, how we behave and how we treat um, each other. Um, it does describes the lived and sometimes unconscious, but generally accepted values, norms, and behavior of a company which I believe is probably very aligned with uh, a number of organizations, how they see it. So if there is no definition, when, then what would be your definition? And this is what we received. Uh, how you behave when no one is looking at you. Um, quite a classic one, but I, but I like it very much. Most common behavior of employee and management in front of the same situation, a set of agreed principles to be lived uh, up to in order to achieve shared vision. So quite, quite classic. I still believe it is important to define what means culture and moreover what means risk management culture. Um, we didn't receive any definition for risk management culture in these organizations that were um, in the survey, um, but they did come up with a number of elements um, which are I think um, very classic. So. I'm not going to spend um, too much time on that, except the last one, um, the last line here, it says curious. Um, so curious, um, understand the risk and action. So curious in terms of risk matter. Define the pros and cons of doing something about it and make, it, make a conscious decision of your mitigation action. And I think um, this is important because we don't always realize um, the extent um, of the mitigation actions we are deciding and um, this is something we should work on on the um, mindset so uh, back to the competencies and behaviors um, we believe are necessary um, for a risk management culture 80 percent of the respondents didn't have any uh, competencies or behaviors um, I mean, listed in their recruitment uh, cycles for example or in their um, training mechanisms a um, number of them told us they had some but couldn't find it easily um, my recommendation is again to try to understand 
what are the competencies you would like uh, in the people for them to um, distribute a culture about risk. So um, these are the elements that we uh, collected from the respondents, um, the different competencies uh, that they think were needed, um, the common sense, no blaming but learning, uh, emotional intelligence, creating the environment, uh, risk needs to be seen as positive and proactive, still probably 90% of the case risk is seen as negative and we talk about most people talk about risks and opportunities forgetting that in the word risks um, the way it is defined by most of the standards around the world it is positive and or negative at the same time and we talk about the outcome of course here um, something i forgot to mention it's about bridging silos uh, this is um, repeated um, very often in in the in the answers uh, it's about bridging the different silos in the organizations okay what the barriers um, that are preventing from implementing sound risk management culture are the same as for agility um, very very common here again um, but I think it, because it's common it means we have to work on it um, so management behavior, um, private agendas, um, culture of fear connected to risk identification and analysis. Um, there is a, a belief that risk analysis is only for experts and maybe it's our fault. Um, I will talk about this a little bit later in the next um, slides. Again, um, maybe a last one on this slide, a method too technocratic and not business oriented enough. Again, that links to our maybe expert view on risk management. So how to solve um, to side, we will see it. Um, what are the initiatives that these organizations have implemented um, to, um, to support a sound risk management um, process? So uh, the first one is collaboration with other assurance functions. Uh, and I would say it's not just uh, the other assurance functions, but it should be any other functions in the, um, the organization. Um, favoring objective discussions um, of a form of risk reporting. Um, remove risk management as dedicated activity and ingrain it into planning, finance and delivery and probably the other processes as well. Um, training online information and the attitude of management. Um, joint workshops, priorities and to-do So it's a lot about collaboration uh, we can see um, here and um, stopping being a risk expert um, and as I will probably repeat, start being a business um, uh, link so what will we see after implementing this uh, various initiatives for research and culture um, what people have answered is better acceptance of risks as part of business life so better understanding of what is risk um, it is is probably simple for us uh, not simple for people uh, seeing risk as only negative um, by the way um, linking risk to company objectives, that's again back to basics. Uh, it's probably meaning that it's already difficult to implement a, let's say, a simple um, risk management process and framework. Um, and this needs to be repeated quite um, often. Um, greater risk awareness, increased number of identified risks, okay. More reliable background for strategic decision making, greater personal ownership of company health. And the last one, increasing opportunities. Again, risk is positive and or negative, but we have to push that in the mindset um, and in the understanding of the um, people. Okay, we are um, close to the, um, to the end of the presentation. Um, I'll share with you the study outcome, um, which is basically a list of elements I believe should be done. Um, and these beliefs or these elements are um, is an analysis of what we collected again from the um, theoretical work. Um, so elements available from these experts we interviewed and from the literature, um, and then the results of the survey with it for that um, customer. So what um, should we work on to be probably more agile and to work on risk culture? Um, I, I try to limit um, the number of points here, uh, but of course um, you will see these points are uh, embedding quite a number of things to be done. But let, let, let's go through it um, one by one. 
Um, so the first point is define what it means um, and involving relevant stakeholders um, and embed these meaning into the strategic thinking. So defining what agility means, defining what culture means in the context of the organization and in the context of risk management. That's the basis, you have to start there. If you do not have an understanding there, then it's gonna be probably difficult. Again, uh, most important is the discussion you will have so that people begin to communicate with another on what it means. Then the second step is to try to understand how to cross-fertilize knowledge between the teams, uh, between the processes, between the departments, between the units. Um, we have huge experience in our organizations. Um, our people have worked in different parts of the organizations usually, they have worked in different organizations in different parts of the world. So all that experience that we can use and collect from within an organization should be somehow used and shared. Um, the third point, um, hire agile personnel or train them to, um, or train the existing ones. Um, this means you need to define what type of competencies you want in your organization for your personnel to be um, agile. And then if your personnel is agile, your company has more chance to be agile as well. Um, the fourth point, um, of course, um, keep open discussion channels and allow to be challenged in the ways of working. Again, why am, am I pushing that? Because um, young generations uh, think um, differently um, and they can, of course, uh, approach um, challenges um, in a different way. We need to be open in these, in these ways of, of working, um, keep the discussions open of course, open with other units and other processes. Um, fifth point, reach out to experts and existing literature like we did, scanning the horizon and listening to internal and external weak signals. Um, I think that's quite, um, it's not always easy to do. Uh, we might say, well, this is not important. It just happened once. Well, maybe it happened once, it's gonna happen again. Um, we want to be open to these uh, weak signals, either on the market or internally. Um, the sixth point um, is about digitalization or automatization. Um, I believe that in the next, in the past, sorry, um, 20, 20 years, um, the software market has done huge progress in helping um, risk managers and decision makers in automatizing risk reports for them. That's just an example. Um, we talk about risk reporting, risk monitoring, action plan monitoring. Um, yes, um, Excel uh, can be very flexible, um, but um, I strongly believe um, the software um, available on the market, a huge number of them can easily help um, and take out um, hundreds of hours of consolidating data and risk within your organization. It's a one push uh, button to create uh, a risk report. It's more important to work on the risk themselves on a yearly, not on a yearly basis, but on a day-to-day -day basis or on a regular basis, depending on um, how important is risk uh, instead of spending too much time on the risk report itself. So we talk a lot more about risk dashboards um, and live monitoring than risk reports. Um, that's what I um, also see on the market nowadays. Um, number seven, um, stop setting up risk management outside core activities and start embedding in company governance curriculum. Um, I always say to my customers, the biggest error you're making is hiring risk managers. And I shouldn't say that I am a risk manager, but we have to be honest with ourselves. I think our role is a lot about training people, giving risk awareness, helping them to uh, analyze risks and completely embed um, these competencies in everybody's uh, mind. Um, this is what we have to do. Um, number eight, um, stop acting as an expert and start being a business partner and increase competencies of operational and corporate teams and others, of course. Um, we have to be careful in the way we behave probably in organization with expert wording. Um, we need to be expert ourselves, but the way we work with the business has to be understood by everybody. Um, 
the last point, uh, walk the talk, that addresses, of course, uh, company executives, um, company management, where um, what we want is not just a signature on a risk management policy, uh, but we have to see signs that uh, risk management is embedded in the right way at the highest level of the organization. Um, and that links to um, an element I uh, mentioned earlier is about the risk analysis being done with um, executives, and that's just an example. So that was a, a very, very quick uh, walkthrough um, on um, this um, survey uh, that was done for, for, for a customer. Um, we decided with um, with Pascal we wanted to have um, some time for you to ask questions or to uh, give a number of remarks. Um, so I'm I'm um, happy um, to answer any questions or hear some remarks. And I'm giving uh, the mic back to Pascal now. Just to ask you those questions. So I also. Um would like to ask you to put your questions either in the questions part or the, the chat part. We already received a couple of questions. Um, thank you, first of all, to uh, you, Stefan, for the insight, the results of, of your survey, for sharing it with us. I think it's quite, um, quite uh, an interesting uh, result there. However, I just put myself first with my question. Sorry to the others. Um, <laughs> Seeing that the respondents and even the, the experts' response on Agile was kind of, we don't really know how to deal with this Agile risk yet. What does it mean? What is it? Um, is it worth to dig further, like for companies to dig further into Agile? What are the benefits of, of going there? Um, you put it in the context of, of culture, for example. Is it rather a framework or culture? Um, is it worth going there based on the results and your evaluation of, of the survey? Yes, thanks, Pascal. Um, um, I think that there is an echo. I don't know if it's only me hearing the echo. Um, I hope not. I hope I'm the only one hearing the echo. Um, I'm going back to the, the, the name of the study. Um, you know, agility, is it a buzzword? Um, I think, yes, it is a buzzword, but it is a useful buzzword. I think it's another way to push organization to look what's happening outside, to look what's happening inside. Um, it's another way to word um, and another way to be to use common sense in the way you run your business basically. Right. So um, everybody's talking about agility, um, but it means there is a need for organization to react to something which is happening or not happening. So you have a, a, a new competitor on the market or there is a new regulation um, or there is a huge problem with a product, whatever it is. Um, agility, that buzzword is helping organization to say, oh, by the way, are we organized in the right way to answer to these changes? And I think that's the only uh, usefulness of the um, agility world today. Um, so yes, we should dig into it. Um, yes, we should define it. Um, and what are the benefits? I think it's very much linked to the risk management definition, which is about achieving um, the objectives. Um, but achieving the objectives um, and adding up to that, that changes can occur very suddenly. And are you prepared? to respond to these changes. I think your answer fits pretty well to, to other questions that were coming up. And uh, they both say much of what you just listed is good as good agile risk management is actually the same as good risk management. So what are the differences now between good risk management and good agile risk management? I, I think the answer for me is there is no there is none. Um, the differences is only a question of communication. It's a question of marketing. It's the way you talk about risk management. Um, we talk about agile projects. We talk about agile risk management. We talk about anything is agile today. It's just an added word, which is just probably reinforcing on how you should do things. 
but you should these, do these things anyway. You should be agile anyway. Okay, there may be a few, um, uh, a few processes where you shouldn't be agile. Maybe in accounting, you shouldn't be agile. Um, you know, there is a number of, of processes like that. You have to really follow the rules. Um, but most of the processes when you are a startup, you're an entrepreneur, you are a very well-established company uh, worldwide, you need to be a child um, anyway. So it's just a, an adjective that we've um, added to push organization to look into it and to maybe, we use that a lot to reinvent themselves um, because today crises are happening more often and they hit harder. Um, we haven't made the link with um, business continuity management, but it is true that nowadays the natural, um, let's say, steps which are following risk management, uh, which are following action plans, is the business continuity management uh, in order to be to be able to address um, catastrophic scenario identified in these organizations. Business continuity management has gone from um, business continuity plans to business continuity management. So it's a lot more about training people to methods instead of implementing plans. So you are a bit more agile because you understand what you're doing. You are trained to do something that may happen one day, not following plans. Okay, that's that's interesting. So when I when I when I hear you in the first part of, of your reply, you say actually there is no difference. It's just a different way of selling it because you should do it anyway as part of your good risk management um, another question we have in this context um, as a result of your, your study is there any insight which can be extracted from the study uh, on board of directors whether they are willing to adapt agile meaning in that case like the interpretation here is less formal processes um, could it also be applied to compliance topics so yeah, probably two parts um, in your in your question. Um, yes, following that study, um, that organization realized probably there were it, it was a bit too technocratic, um, and they agreed at least to think of working differently with objectives, um, working differently in reporting activities. Um, they realize in that specific country compared to another country. Uh, the reporting needed on some activities was less regular and that's okay. Um, the way they were implementing risk management or the different tools that were using were different because the, the local need is different than from the global need. You need at some point to be able to consolidate that's absolutely fine. That's the role of the corporate risk um, you know, department to be able to align um, the data at some point. Uh, for um, higher executives and management. But locally, you should probably allow people to work differently and adapt processes to their exact needs. I think we have to be um, conscious um, of that. And that would take, um, take out a number of, um, I mean, the heavy weight of also uh, the corporate needs. So adapting, I think, to the environment um, as we are pushing for, for risk management. Um, second part of your um, question is about um, compliance. Um, how to be agile in compliance? Uh, that would be could be a, a topic for another webinar. Um, I'm always of the opinion, of course, you are compliant or you're not compliant. There's no gray zone. What you have to ask yourself is, when are you going to be compliant? And with what have you decided to be compliant with? It's a company decision, it's a management decision to say, we're going to be compliant with this, but we can't be compliant with that now. We will be compliant later. These are the steps we are taking to be compliant later. And there are some elements uh, where you might say, no, we're not going to be compliant with that because it's not maybe core, it's not that important. And I give an example. I'm not saying you shouldn't be compliant with anything. I'm just looking at the facts. Um, if you look at um, FedEx or these, you know, um, parcel services, um, if you look at the fines um, on a yearly basis, um, they have to pay um, in the town of New York in the US, it's multiple million 
dollars every year because their um, their coaches have to park anywhere on the street and they don't they're not compliant with um, the street regulation so they have decided not to be compliant with these elements because their core activity is to deliver the right customer on the right time with the right uh, right parcel so all i'm saying is you need to be clear on what you be what you want to be com compliant with now or later and what you think is not that important to be compliant with there are different levels of compliance okay another questions would you consider sit reps a useful tool for agile risk management I haven't heard of sit reps, so if you have, otherwise maybe if you could specify the, the question. Yes, please. I, I'm not maybe familiar with that um, that tool. I can okay. have a look. So. so maybe then as a result of your survey, um, the companies replied, no, we don't. We're not agile. Uh, we never heard of it. Um, does it mean, based on your reply, that agile risk management is good risk management, that companies don't do good risk management nowadays? <laughs> I think we have a huge number of initiatives um, in quite a number of companies we know. Um, I mean, especially for us in our context around Switzerland here, um, there are quite a number of investments uh, since quite a number of years in implementing um, processes, in training people, in implementing software to have these risk reports given to executives. Um, I strongly believe that the, at least the people from in our network, the people on our, are highly skilled in risk management. And probably, I'd say we, because we are risk managers here, we are more skilled than the resources we are given. Um, this means that an organization has, of course, constraints um, in terms of governance, in terms of budget, and uh, comparing probably between um, your competencies um, what you would like to implement. Maybe you're able to implement 10% of what you wish. Um, so no i don't think we 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 don't work in the right way i don't think we do bad risk management i think it's only linked to the resources available to risk management um especially i think in training uh, we can see at least this is my, my observation um there's a i think probably a bit more done on risk reporting um yearly or quarterly exercises more than uh, you know, training people on analyzing risk. And what we want in the end is that the organizations and the personnel is able to analyze risk themselves to take the right decisions at the right time. The reporting should be the end result of all of that. Um, and probably um, we need it, but I think we should increase budget and resources um, into um, all these training and competency mechanisms. Thank you. So we got the clarification. The question was, would you consider sit reps, and those are situation reports, um, as uh, a useful tool for agile risk management, as some organizations have started to move from risk regs to those situation reports? Yes, I, probably it's linked to what I used to call RECs, right? So uh, uh, the, the, the written on experience um, from any event. Um, so any analysis, any the thing is, uh, as long as you work on incidents, it means it has already happened. Um, yes, it is useful to look at these, you know, root cause analysis on on, on events. Um, at the same time, maybe what we want to to do is to be more proactive on what could happen and how it could happen. So try to probably use these competencies in terms of root cause analysis and transform that into the risk uh, analysis. So not when it has happened, but when you think it can happen. Correct. Maybe one last question now. Has there been two more questions? Question, has there been any studies on return on investment made in agile risk management or risk management in general? 
are you aware of? <laughs> um, st studies. I, I, it's funny. I, I was on a, on a call um, before our webinar, um, and this is probably the most difficult element we all have to work on is what's the return on investment of risk management so on agile risk management no i haven't seen anything um and there's very little on risk management itself um it's difficult to prove that your value is for something that has not happened in the end this is what you try to do is you are lowering frequencies of risks you are lowering consequences of risks how can you prove you are responsible for this value um, but like any like many other um, of course um, processes in the organization I think um, the value is given by the fact that people talk about risk understand risk and include risk in strategy setting they include risk in business objective setting in management reviews i don't think you can prove easily the value of risk management in terms of return on investment at the same time if you realized in your risk register i know people don't like to use the word risk register but you probably have a list of risks for your organization uh, you have identified a number of um, potential consequences um, for that particular risk. If um, bad luck, it does happen, you can still compare the reality of the consequences that have happened for that risk compared to what you have envisaged. And there is, hopefully there is a difference and you can either prove your value or not if it's even worse than what you anticipated. The, the last question goes a bit into the direction of, of what you just said before with where you can prove it. Um, although I think it's rather provocative, um, the, the question is, uh, like the main question is, which hazards has agile risk management actually prevented? I think that kind of <laughs> was, right was answered what you just said. Uh, in a way, it's hard to say particularly then which methodology with which approach actually is, is the one that... Uh, yeah, I think I remember when we also prepared the webinar um, with you, Pascal, we, we mentioned a number of things around, I mean, how difficult it is to implement new processes. I, I still think risk management is still quite young in its implementation in the organization, even if we can probably mention a number of things 20 years ago. If you look at quality 40 years ago, it was difficult to implement quality in organizations. Uh, so risk management, let's say most of the work has been done in the past 20 years. Um, look at business continuity management. How many organizations do you know have a business continuity management department and have business continuity management training um, in the organization? Very few compared to risk management and it should be completely aligned. Um, a number, another element, I believe that, um, and thanks to our friends in, in Great Britain and UK, um, I believe most of the, um, let, let's say they were earlier on risk management education um, than in the rest of Europe. Um, and the people that have been trained in risk management are not all yet at the top of organizations. So, I mean, and this is also a message to everybody listening to us, I think then when you will go even higher up in the different organizations you are working for, you will be able to spread the word differently. Um, today, um, maybe your executives, top management of your organization may not have been trained or educated in risk management. And that's also a reason why we are still struggling a little bit uh, in implementing these processes or these agile processes agile for me meaning adapt continuously adapting to your context okay. thank you very much stepan we close with uh, this one it's uh, about six o'clock here um thank you very much to everyone who attended also beyond uh, switzerland um following up we have planned further webinars uh, along the year about every three months um already in the pipeline and uh, we're in the last phase of coordinating another format that helps us even during the pandemic to kind of in improve the, the engagement. 
uh, which is, uh, we call it kind of risk lunches or risk aperos. Um, and you will get uh, notified like the Swiss IRM community on um, how we can uh, engage better, have discussions uh, on risk management, even if we can't see each other face to face. Thank you very much. Stay healthy and uh, have a great evening. Thanks to all. Bye-bye.